Okay, and you're back with the repair of the Denon DRS-810. With the birds outside shouting some helpful suggestions. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Now, I think I may have this thing licked. And if I'm right in thinking what's actually wrong with this thing, you won't believe how simple it is. Now, one thing somebody suggested was belts, but despite this thing being over 20 years old, all the belts in this are still good. They haven't degraded, or turned into goo, or anything like that, so... Anything like that. They haven't degraded, turned into goo, anything like that. They're still just as good as they are, so it can still function. I think the problem is over here, although you cannot actually see it because this thing's in the way, so I'll move the camera. I think the problem is here, with these two sensors that sense when the tape door is closed. Which would explain why it's been acting so weird. Now, this one here seems okay. If I put my meter on it and just test it for continuity, if I can just get my meter in there, I can just get my probes on there. I hope my enormous hair isn't getting into the shot. I'm just trying to get the motor, I'm just trying to get the probes on there. I'm going to trip this sensor so it's where it would be when the tape door is closed. Well, this one is a little bit. This is a little bit flimsy, I mean, that's not even... Sounds like we've got some very scratchy contacts in there. So we've got one faulty sensor there, and... I know this one is faulty. Although I think this one is not quite as bad. If I can just get my multi-meter multi probes on there. This is the time when alligator clips on my probes would be a really good idea. I'm trying to do... I really need like three hands to do this. So let's try this one. This one isn't quite as bad, but... You can see it's not... We should be getting a constant beep out of the meter. And we are not. Okay, well I have the two micro switches out. Well, I say micro switches, I mean, I guess they are sort of like micro switches, but they don't have a click on them, so... So now I've attached alligator clips onto my multimeter, we can actually do a more accurate test of these. Now one of them isn't as badly as affected as the other one. I don't know which one it is, it might be this one, it might be that one, but... When I push the switch to the closed position... I think this is the one that's not quite as badly affected, but... This is all the way... And you might be out here, we're not getting a consistent beat with that one. And this one, which is... I know this one is the bad one now, the, the really bad one. This one barely works at all. Of course I say that, and now it appears to be working. So I guess that was the worst one of the two. So this one is more or less okay, but this one definitely needs some attention. Okay, so I have the switches apart now, and I was a little bit worried about doing this because I thought I might break one of them at one point. But I managed to get them apart, and 
you can sort of see how they work. This one has still got the thing on it, so I can show you how it works. So as you can see, we've got two little contacts in there, and when this lever gets pushed all the way, well, not all the way, but when this lever gets pushed, it pushes the two contacts together. But what I want to do is take those contacts out, give them a clean, reassemble the switches, put them back in the tape recorder, and that should fix the problem. I also want to see if I can bend this lower contact, or rather this upper contact, up a little bit so it makes better contact with the lower contact. Alright, progress! Magic. Chess magic. Still my favourite compilation of the king. Speaking of magic, I still have to work a little bit of magic on this tape recorder in order to get it to work. Now, I've replaced the two micro well, put the two micro switches back in, and they weren't the only cause of the problem in this, although they would have needed attention sooner or later, so I'm glad I've done that anyway, but it is still doing that thing that it was doing before. If I try and play a tape, it plays for a few seconds and then shuts off. And one of you suggested that a bad belt was the problem. Now, though, like I said, all the belts seem good, this one here does not appear to be doing its job. So if I press play, I can see the counter going, but there's no sound, and it'll, it'll shut off in a couple of seconds. There it goes. But if... I turn this wheel around the rest of the way when I press play. There we go. Okay, I don't know what that noise is. I think it's supposed to be music, but I can not do it. I think that was one of the things, one of the recordings I was using in one of my in one of my videos about why modern music sucks. But yeah, try and press play. Move this thing. There we go. Okay, I am not going to pollute a 1960s tape recorder anymore with that kind of garbage. So with its own belt, it's just simply not able to turn all the way by itself. So all I need to do is replace that belt there, and we should be good. Although, how I'm going to get to that belt to replace it, well, beats the heck out of me. Okay, well I cannot find a replacement belt. I've had a look in a few other machines I have, see if I had a suitably sized belt, but I don't have one. So what I've done, for the meantime, is I've just got a rubber band, then cut it to size, and then, if we can just move this round a little bit without interfering with anything. Tied the ends together. So, I wouldn't say that's a repair, that's just really a temporary job until I can find a better belt. But... It works! And it's playing a happy little song in celebration of it. And don't ask what the name of the song is, because it's something I'm working on, so... yeah. Anyway, while well, someone slices carrots outside, and there's some annoying people going, Ooh! as well. For some reason that carrot... For some reason that chirp always reminds me of someone slicing carrots. I don't know why. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it for now, and hopefully next time you'll see this fully assembled and with a proper belt. But until next, but until then, and until next time, goodbye.